Okay, I said that today's lesson would be much easier. Today's lesson is about what's called the power rule, and I have it written uh, right here. It's called the power rule because it uh, is a simple way of finding the derivative of something that is raised to a power. So in this case, x is raised to some power n. And the a in front is, again, just a number. Any number except for the, the variable here, the, the function will tell you a variable. Here's f of x. If it was f of t, t is a variable. Everything else is a coefficient or just a number. It represents a number, not a variable. Okay? So it says f of x equals a x to the n. a and n are just numbers. This is a general case. Then the derivative is n times a x to the n minus 1. Very simply speaking, you take whatever number that is in that power, you multiply it to the front, and then you drop the power by 1. Okay, we'll see that in a couple examples here. I'm going to start with actually a fairly complicated example. Here's 1 over 2 root x. Well, this doesn't seem to be in that format because there's no power. It's a square root of x. But if you remember, <coughs> a square root of x is like the half power of x. So this is 1 over 2x to the 1 half. But now if you also remember, if I have a power on the bottom, that's like having a power on the top with a negative. So this is like 1 half x to the negative 1 half. I still have my fraction number here, 1 half. But now x is out. It's out on the top. It's out on the side. In this case, x to the negative 1 half. So here's my power, negative 1 half. And I have 1 half in front. The power rule says, Multiply the power by the number in front. So negative one half times positive one half is negative one fourth. Negative one fourth. And then I put x, and then I drop the power by one. Well, it's negative one half. If I drop it by one, that's negative one and a half, negative 1.5, or if I were to keep it as a uh, <clears throat> improper fraction as I would prefer, I would have negative 3 over 2. x to the negative 3 over 2. Well, there we go. There's the derivative. Negative 1 fourth x to negative 3 over 2. This is actually one of the more complicated examples. And all I did is I multiplied this by there, and then I dropped the power by 1. So that's why I went to negative 3 halves. But if I wanted to have it to be totally correct, it has to look in the same form it started with. I had a square root here. To end with, I need to have some sort of root. And you need to remember, we need to transfer this back to where it was. So I'm going to transfer it to negative 1, and I'm going to put 4 to the positive, uh, x to the positive 3 over 2. So I'm going to change it to a positive power. And I'm also going to remember that a fraction means a root. So the over 2 means the square root. Okay, so this is... Uh, let me write the answer over here. This is negative 1 over 4 square root of x cubed. There's the power. There's the root. This is just the reason I picked this example is to remind you of how the square roots go to uh, and any sort of roots go to exponents, negative positive exponents, because we're going to be using it quite a bit. I just want to remind you of it. Plus, if you can do this example, the other ones are much, much simpler. So we used the power rule. We, dropped the, we multiplied the power out in front, and, we dropped, uh, and then we dropped the power by 1. That's the power rule. We'll see a simpler case later, but there we go. That would be my derivative. f uh, prime of x is equal to that, the derivative. Okay, <clears throat> two other things that we have this lesson. If you take the derivative of a constant function, so f of x equals a number, the derivative is always 0. And you can use the power rule to show this. Because the power on x is 0, 0 times the number out in front would make it 0. So if it's just a number like 3, f of x equals 3, take the derivative, that's 0. You can also say, because a constant graph is horizontal, well, that's a slope of 0, so the derivative is 0. Okay. And then the last one says, if I have a function that equals two functions added together, which sounds complicated, but it's really not, then the derivative of that function is just the derivative of those two functions added together. Okay, so we're going to use those to do this problem. Here's f of x. f of x equals 3x squared plus 9x minus 3. Okay, so let's use the power rule on the first one. And we get to do these each separately because it's like their own little function. 
3x squared is its own because it's separated by a plus. Minus 3 is its own. It's separated by a, a minus. All these, there's three different sort of functions being added and subtracted, so I get to do them all individually. That's what this rule says. So 3x squared, using the power rule, 2 multiplied by 3 is 6, and then I drop the power by 1, so it's just 6x to the 1. The power here is 1, so 1 times 9 is 9. If I drop the power by 1, that's x to the 0, Anything to the zero power equals one, not zero. X to the zero equals one, so I don't need to write it because nine times one is one. And the derivative of negative three, negative three is just a number, the derivative of a constant is zero. So I don't need to write anything, this is my derivative. F prime of X equals six X plus nine. And there you can see, I just took a derivative and it was a whole lot faster than using the formal definition. We'll have more methods later, but that's it for now.